This is Carrie Johnson with the Iowa Department of Management. And the purpose of this webinar is to provide county ag extension users with an overview of the property tax levy opportunities for ag extension, as well as an overview of the process to adopt um, the fiscal year 26 budget. First, we'll go over some general budget information, explain the property tax levies that are available, and then we'll also provide an overview of the online budget submittal system so you can familiarize yourself with the process. First of all, I would like to point out if you're interested in historical information regarding budgets as far as different rates that your county or perhaps other counties have had in the past um, as far as different property tax rates and usages you can consult our website um, the link that's listed here is our other authority resources page that's where you'd find information about ag extension rates so you can go directly to this page scroll down a little bit you'll see property tax rate data and you can access ag extension district um, property tax files they do go back several years and you can see for each year that's listed the different rates that are being used how many dollars are raised via property tax and um, the property valuation within those areas so the Department of Management's role with the um, process is to provide the forms. So we, with, that does include these web-based forms that you're going to be using. We provide the instructions. So with um, when you're inside the online budget forms, you'll see a button that says instructions, and you can click on that for the instructions document. We also provide technical assistance for all the different local governments that um, submit budgets to us that use property tax. So all the cities and schools and counties, et cetera, um, we provide assistance to uh, get those folks uh, have their annual budgets adopted and set their property tax rates. So if we're talking about ag extension specifically, there are a few different um, property tax levies that are available to ag extension. Uh, the main one for folks is the ag extension um, education fund. And so the levy limits for this fund depend on the population of your district and whether or not there's been a successful referendum authorizing regular limits to be exceeded. You'll find this in um, Code of Iowa 176A10. So the maximum tax includes your total asking, which would be property tax plus utility replacement tax. You may have a situation where your election specified a lower limit than what was shown in um, the actual budget instructions. Uh, to my knowledge, that hasn't occurred at this time, but um, that, that could be an option moving forward. And also to my knowledge, all ag extension districts have had an election to approve the basic limits. You would need to consult the budget instructions to determine your fiscal 26 levy limit based on your population size. Another property tax levy that may or may not be used within your district is a levy for unemployment compensation. And this is found, the authorization is found in section 9631 of the Code of Iowa. And it does provide that um, political subdivisions, including ag extensions, can levy a tax to pay for the cost of unemployment benefits. Another property tax levy that is available to districts is the tort liability, and this authorization is found in Chapter 670 of the um, Code of Iowa, and it provides that 
if you um, you know need to, if your your ability to levy within your education fund is insufficient, you can levy in this particular tort liability fund for certain types of coverage, and it includes things like professional liability, general liability, auto liability, bonds, etc. Um, also can be used for the payment of a judgment or settlement. So if your district was um, subject to a settlement um, or any sort of judgment where you needed to pay per, per a court order, then you could use the tort liability to also pay for that, um, that judgment or settlement. So those are the different levies that are available to you. Of course, the most important there um, would be your education extension, um, extension education fund. Um, that's where the majority of your operations is funded. I wanna talk briefly about a couple different revenue sources that are not property tax, but are a replacement um, due to legislation that reduced uh, property tax levy ability. Um, one used to be called the business property tax credit. That was in place for a number of years, uh, back uh, beginning with fiscal 24. That went away and was replaced with um, a, instead of a business property tax credit, a reduction of value um, to specific types of property and it's now called the two-tier replacement. So beginning with fiscal 24, you no longer received a business property tax credit reimbursement from the state. You would receive a two-tier replacement um, credit from the state as a source of revenue. So as 24 was the first year that this um, additional non-tax revenue was put into play, you can go back and sort of look and see what you received in fiscal 24 as payment, and that might help you estimate your fiscal year 26 replacement revenue. If you um, budget for this revenue, you'd find it under the line for other non-tax revenues and replacements. Similarly, um, commercial and industrial is a replacement on the loss of potential property tax dollars. This has actually, um, legislation was passed a number of years ago to phase this out over time. So we have put together a spreadsheet. If you go to this link, you'll see a spreadsheet that estimates for you what you would receive in the remaining years of this replacement. Um, the last year of the replacement, I believe, is fiscal year 29. So, so just keep in mind, um, this is again another item you would re you would report under that non-tax revenues and replacement, and you can find a good estimate of what you'll receive um, in this particular link down here. Your budget deadline was changed a couple years ago uh, to be uh, the uh, April 30th. Um, it used to be March 15th for a long, long time, but now your budget deadline is April 30th. Budget protests, so citizens in your area can protest your budget. Protests are covered under Code of Iowa Section 2427. So after you adopt your budget locally, folks in your area that are affected by your budget can circulate a petition and submit that to the county auditor um, to protest whatever they find in your budget that that is not something they agree with. As far as how many signatures need to be on that petition, it varies depending on the number of, of people that voted in that county, for instance, at the last uh, governor's election. But it is no less than 10. So folks can protest your budget, even if it's been approved um, you know, by your local board and you've had your hearing, they can do that. Their deadline to do that is May 10th, so essentially 10 days after your budget deadline. Um, folks have time to circulate a petition and protest your budget. They would submit that to the county auditor, and then the county auditor would forward that protest document to the state appeal board. 
The State Appeal Board is a three-member body consisting of the Director of Department of Management, the Treasurer of State, and the Auditor of State. So if they would have a budget protest forwarded to them by your county auditor, they would um, submit that to staff and staff would conduct a local um, hearing you know, in your county on your budget where you would speak to your budget and the folks that protested would also speak to your budget. Staff would gather all that information, take that back to the State Appeal Board, and the State Appeal Board would render a decision on your budget that can include reducing your tax asking or and or expenditures. Um, when you're in your budget year, um, when you're in your current year uh, for your budget, if you find a need to increase your expenditures in any of your funds, so say a large project comes into play and you need to um, increase what you had budgeted as expenditures, say in your extension education fund, um, you would need to go through the process to amend the budget. Um, the amendment must be effective before the expenditure amount is exceeded. So say you had a total budgeted expenditures for your extension education fund of $300,000, but there's a large project that came into play during the year and you needed to increase that to $350,000. In order to do that, essentially you have to go back to your public. Um, you would have to hold another hearing, you know, give notice, not less than 10, no more than 20 days prior to the date of that hearing. Let your um, folks come and speak to that amendment. And then your uh, your board, your council would render a decision decision on the amendment itself. Amendments like budgets are subject to protest. If you amend really close to the end of the fiscal year, so after May 31st, there's a good chance that there would not be time for the State Appeal Board to hold a hearing on that protest and render a decision you know within those 30 days so essentially your budget amendment would be void so just sort of keep that in mind um, as you as you go through the year the amendment form itself the budget amendment form is an online form just like your your budget it's um, within the same system you essentially go back to that existing um, current year budget and you'll see a button to amend on that budget. It would generate a one page form, um, very simple form for you to fill out that would then um, need to be obviously published in your newspaper and approved within, within the budget system. And there is a button for instructions found um, within the budget system within the amendment itself should you find yourself needing to go through that process. I'll take a few minutes now to provide an overview of the online budget system. If you've done this process before, you'll find that it's very similar um, to prior years. So for fiscal year 26, the login access should transfer from last year. If for some reason you'll you see that it hasn't or you need access to a different county or whatever uh, certainly let me know that or if you have a staff member that needs access um, send me an email and i'll help provide the information that's needed to to get them access to the system if you use the tab key during data entry it does move between the cells in which you can enter data you can use the arrow keys to move up and down and side to side Keep in mind that ending fund balances are produced by subtracting the sum of all the expenditures from beginning balance plus revenues. And then sort of whatever is left is your ending fund balance. As you move within a page of the budget forms, uh, you'll find that the cell that you are in, that the row and column should be green highlighted just to kind of help you keep your place within the forms. And anytime there is a blue cell, 
those are the cells that you can type into. If it's a white cell, it's either um, pulling from another source, pulling from another data source, or it's um, there's a formula behind that cell and you can't enter into it. To access the online budget system, again, you'd go to our, you can either go directly to that resource page that I mentioned, you can go to our homepage um, and go to local government at the blue ribbon on the top and then select other authority resources. Um, and again, go to that page. The page does have a variety of pieces of information and training on it for local levy authorities. Um, this has information about for assessors and ag extensions and townships and lots of different folks. Uh, to, to get into the online budget system itself, you'll want to scroll down and select um, this orange square that you find under online applications. And again, it's called the Local Government Valuation Finance System. When you click on that, the first um, screen you'll see is a home screen. And what it will list for you is the counties that have filed their data, filed their valuations data, and the counties that have not filed yet. So it'll put them in one or the other category. Um, counties have to file property valuation data by January 1 of each year. And that valuation data is populated into your budget forms so you can calculate, um, actually, so the form can calculate your property tax rate based on how many dollars you're asking for. So again, homepage looks like this. If you click on the login, you'll see a blue box here where you enter your Enterprise a, &A account ID. Um, and then once you're into the system, it'll indicate that you're, you're in there on the top left and you'll have the option to go into your budgets. The main part of the screen, if you click on budgets, you'll see um, the budgets that you have access to and they'll be listed by year. The 2026 budget obviously is a new budget for you. Um, prior year budgets would be finalized. You can still look at them, um, but you can't actually make changes to those. You can amend a current year budget, um, but that will generate a new form for you to complete. Once you're inside the budget, so you click edit to go into your fiscal 26 budget. At the top, you'll see different tabs that represent the different funds and essentially different pages of the budget that you need to complete. Now, if you don't use unemployment, um, the unemployment levy, or you don't have any um, you know, fund balance or anything in that levy, or you don't use tort liability, you would not need to complete those pages. Um, data entered on those different fund tabs and the tax requests that you'll enter on your adopted budget summary will pull over onto the public hearing tab and fill out the remainder of that adopted budget summary tab. Within each um, tab that are funds, you'll see two separate tabs, one revenue and one expenditures. So uh, your primary fund, of course, is your extension education fund. You'll see a tab for revenue and you'll see a tab for expenditures. Very importantly, you do need to realize you have to enter three years of data. That is a statutory requirement. So you need to enter the actual year data. So the year that has ended, that's been audited and you have the information for that. You enter your actual year data. So it'd be fiscal 24 in this case. You enter your current year data. So essentially it would be simply your budget data as you had adopted it but also um, reflecting any changes that you are aware of. Um, that's why it's called re-estimated. So if you know some large project is not going to happen, or if you had amended your budget for, for something to happen, you need to be sure to reflect those changes in your re-estimated. And then of course your, your budgeted um, data, what you're proposing for the upcoming fiscal year. 
Tort Liability Fund, again, very similar to TABS, revenue and expenditure. Um, there may be lots of folks that don't use either that or the Unemployment Compensation Fund tab. Um, obviously, you would only complete those in the event that you um, need to need to complete those. So um, the Adopted Budget Summary tab, as I mentioned, it's going to be pulling like all this information up here related to expenditures, um, proposed ending fund balance, et cetera, is going to be pulled from the supporting pages, those supplemental detail pages for those funds. So that's why it's all white. Um, down here, uh, as we talked about, your county auditor, when they file value, that information is populated within your fund, um, within this, this page by fund. And um, it's not something you need to do. As soon as that value is filed, it will be populated in here. What you need to do, of course, is enter into the blue cells, and that's where you enter your property tax dollar request. Again, you would need to consult your budget instructions, and that will tell you the maximum amount of dollars you can request based on your population. When you enter your dollars in here, the form will then take a look at the value and calculate a tax rate. Once you're in the budget, you can check errors and that will help you, um, you know, make sure that there's not a step that you're missing. You can save. Um, and we encourage you, obviously, to do that quite quite often. You can also print at any time. You can print either just the current page um, of the budget that you're working in, just that tab, or you can also print the full budget. Valuations populated, as I mentioned, once the county auditor files their value in our system, it's populated into your budget forms. And that way you can complete your budget and calculate tax rates. Until those values are filed, or if say the county has filed values, but they realize there's a mistake that needs corrected, if that's the case, they will unfile their value. In either case, you'll see this notice at the top. And what that is really telling you is that whatever value, either there's no value in there because they haven't filed or your county auditor has filed values and then unfiled them for any number of reasons. So the value may change. And if you have questions, you're seeing this notice, at the top of your forms and you have questions, just contact your county auditor. Again, you can print the full budget anytime under this print option. You can print only the current page you're on. Um, once you propose your budget uh, for publication, you can also print just the publication notice. If you're in Google Chrome, you can select your local printer. Obviously, you can print a hard copy, um, but you can also save to PDF as the destination. And that way you can have a PDF version of your documentation and um, save it off to your machine. Supplementary details, again, you go through, you enter your revenue and expense details on the supplemental detail pages for all three years, and that data is pulled forward to your adopted budget summary and hearing tabs. If you want to include electronic or virtual information on the notice, there is a text box on the bottom of the public hearing tab. So you can plug that in there. You can also put it into the location space on your notice. Before you move forward, you obviously need to check your errors. Um, you can't publish your budget if you have errors. For instance, you know, if you do check errors and it comes up with red here, it'll tell you what your error is and let you know that you can't publish. If you do an errors check in its screen, then you have no errors as far as what the system knows. Now that doesn't indicate necessarily that your numbers are correct, but it does indicate that you have went, um, you have completed the process um, and, and the steps that are the basic ones required to move forward with, with the budget. Um, you would proceed and that would uh, allow you to enter the time, date, and place of your hearing. Um, and that would then, once you hit propose, it would generate that notice that you print or save off and either way, get to your newspaper for publication. 
Following the public hearing, the council can make allowable revisions. So you publish that notice, not less than 10, no more than 20 days prior to the date of the hearing itself. You hold your hearing, um, folks come or don't come, and you hear any feedback from your citizens. At that point, your council can either approve the budget as, as it stands or can do certain allowable revisions. And the only allowable revisions are you can decrease the tax asking from what was published or you can decrease the expenditures that were published. You can never increase. So if your council indicated, okay, we budgeted 300,000 for expenditures, but we actually think that's too much. Following what we heard from the public, we want to budget 250,000 instead. You can do that. You would go back into the budget. You'd return to draft, which basically just opens up your budget for errors. You'd reduce those expenditures, save it, propose, publish again. Just by clicking the button, you wouldn't need to propose or publish in the newspaper. Um, and then you can go ahead and adopt the budget with that lower expenditure. At that point, or if no revisions were needed, you just click that adopt. You enter the date that it was adopted and um, click the adopt button. With the county auditor, you do need to file certain documents. You need to file your proof of publication uh, that you got from your newspaper, and you need to file the signed adopted budget and supplementary detail pages with your county auditor. We are currently working through a process to allow those documents to be uploaded into our system for the county auditor to then download um, and access. We hopefully will have that ready for fiscal 26, so within the next month or two, but we will keep you informed um, if that's going to be available or not. We'll let you know with further instructions. If you do have any questions, feel free to contact me. My phone number is listed here, and my email address is carrie.johnson at dom.iowa.gov. Thank you.